Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra Schooley. If you are new here, I am all about lifestyle, health, fitness, becoming the best version of you and keeping Jesus at the center of your life. And like you saw in the title of today's video, this is pretty much all the ways and habits and tricks to keep Jesus at the center of my life. This is something that is so important because I feel that when Jesus is not the center of my life, I get distracted. The enemy will feed me lies, telling me things that are not true, and I just am not my best self. And that's what I'm all about here is helping you guys to have a stronger and better walk with the Lord and to enjoy your life while you're doing it because we have all these things. If you're anything like me, I have my own real estate business, I have my own housekeeping business, I'm trying to be healthy, I'm trying to go to the gym, I'm trying to eat well, I'm trying to volunteer at church and balance my relationship with the Lord and balance my relationships with my families and loved ones. So there's just so many things in life that we have to balance and these really keep me on track and they help me so much. These are daily things, weekly things that I do to just keep Jesus at the center of my life. And my hopes is that this is going to help you and inspire you. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I pretty much post content just like this all the time. A lot of morning routines, a lot of faith-based content. And I pray for all of you when you come across this channel or subscribe or like a video. I can ramble on forever, but it is so good to see you guys, and let's get right into today's video. Getting right into it, the first thing and the first tip, and I would really build this into your habits every single day, is getting into the Word of God first or getting into prayer first. As soon as I roll out of bed, it is really easy for me to want to do a million other things, and by starting off with prayer and that direct connection with the Lord, it's so sweet. God loves when we come to him and we want to be able to get rid of all the burdens on us because if you're anything like me, I have a lot of different things that I love to stress about, but God does not want us to do that. He wants us to come to him. He is our daily bread. That's why they call him the daily bread for a reason. We want to get fed daily through his word and through our prayer life and supplication to him. And I always want to make sure that this is biblically sound doctrine. So I'm going to bring you guys a piece of scripture with pretty much every piece of advice that I'm going to give you in today's video. So I pulled up Psalms 5-3. Some of you may be familiar with this. If you have a Bible, I would always encourage you to listen to my videos with the Bible because I think that the Word speaks truth into our life so much more than anybody else can or facilitate. So Psalms 5-3 says, In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. So how sweet is that? This is basically saying in the morning, lay everything at the foot of Jesus, at the foot of the cross. He wants us to bring our requests to him. And it's not just our burden. It also says requests. So those godly desires that we have, the things that we want to know about, God wants us to come to him, to his word and in prayer so that he can speak into our lives. And if you guys do this on a daily basis, I'm telling you, it will transform your relationship with the Lord. It is very, very powerful, and it's something that really changed my life by reading the Bible first, praying first, and, and really praying more. I, I wasn't praying a lot, and now I pray unceasingly. <laughs> There's so many verses that tell us God wants us to to give us everything that we're, we're having burdens in or worrying about or have questions about. Like he wants to hear that. So bring him your requests in the morning, lay them down for him and then wait expectantly, wait and have patience to hear the voice of God. And in starting with reading God's word and prayer first in the morning is the first tip for today's video. This is my favorite piece of advice that I'm going to give you in this entire video. And this is something that God actually transformed in my life. And that is creating biblical affirmations to read every single morning. And Ashley Hetherington, I think is her name. I'm going to link her YouTube below. She inspires me so much. I love her content. I love that she is found in biblical advice in scripture. She is a great example of another female Christian YouTuber that I would love for you guys to go like and subscribe to. And she actually has these mirrors and around the mirrors, 
there are affirmations. So an affirmation, if you're unfamiliar, is I am this, I am this, I can this. So they're, they're all personal things that you are or that you can do or that God says about you. And now the reason I say biblical affirmations is because in today's society, we see in a lot of new age practices and, and I can do this and I can do that. It's very self-centered and God is not in a part of that. And I think what's really cool is that the Bible actually gives us biblical affirmations about what God really says we are about our true character, what he says about us. And as believers, we should seek our validation and our worth from the Lord because the Bible tells us that his word is the truth and that it never changes. I have them right in front of my armoire and every morning as soon as I get up and I have to wash my face first, that is the first thing I do technically because I'm not awake otherwise, but I'll come back and I will actually look at these affirmations and I get to hear the Lord speak to me so sweetly about who I am in Christ and that rooted and firm foundation and I don't want to look to the world because the world will sway and change and it's going to change and people's viewpoints are going to change but the word of God remains true through all of eternity and what better way to have a habit and a tip um, to start consistently doing in the morning than to be fed the truth about who you are because the world will tell you a million different things about what you are what you should be what your life should look like but the only opinion that we should care about is the word of God. The next habit and tip I have is going to be a hard pill to swallow for myself and also for a lot of you guys and that is to not be anxious and to not worry. Now you may be thinking I cannot do that but this is biblical the Lord tells us this in his word in Philippians 4 6 I'm gonna read to you do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving let your request be known to God and then my breakdown of this is that and I'm reading my notes so if you see me looking down I just want to make sure I give you guys good fruitful information that the Lord has spoken into my life and I've prayed over so it says, pray nonstop when good, bad, confusing things happen. This is a habit you must practice in a daily basis to start having better communication with the Lord on a 24 seven everyday basis. So this is so powerful. And I've already mentioned this before in the first point, that that connection to the Lord is so crucial. And I'm not even kidding. He will start speaking to you. If you're wondering like, well, how do I hear the word of God? How do I hear the voice of God? He really wants us to pray unceasingly and to have a strong, powerful connection to him in prayer. And nobody can disrupt us from that, right? When you're in a meeting, when you're with a friend at work, when you're typing on your computer, when you're running an errand, when you're picking up your kid, when you're lifting weights in the gym, when you're sitting there in that relationship you know you're not supposed to be in and you're feeling anxious, pray. Pray about it. Pray unceasingly. God wants us to lay it all down. And if this is a habit that you can pick up, then I really think you'll see a lot of changes and positive changes about keeping Jesus in the center of your daily routine. Because we can do this all the time. Nobody has to hear us. We don't actually have to close our eyes. Sometimes I'm driving and I'm talking out loud and I'm just driving my car me and my friends talk about this all the time my my church friend Lindsay she's a leader she's a good friend she's getting married this summer we always talk about how we probably look like nut jobs like crazy people with no radio on no earpiece in no you know phone up to our head just talking and we're talking to the Lord and it's so sweet because I'll be on like an hour drive and then I'm like oh my gosh like I'm five minutes away from my destination and I've been praying that whole time and it goes by like that. But you know what? You'll feel so good when you get those things off your chest that you just need to talk to God about. And, and that's a really good thing to build into your daily habits. Okay, I just want to stop and say thank you if you are still watching. I appreciate it so, so much. And I pray for all of you that watch these videos and subscribe to my channel. It really does mean the world to me that people actually come to a platform that I have that God has blessed me with that I can hopefully speak into your guys' life and I do it through biblical doctrine. I never want to just be giving random advice that comes from my heart. I want it to come from what Jesus wants for all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's get right into the next two points. There's only a couple more. 
So the next one is get on your knees and pray to Jesus daily as an act of reverence dedicated in secret. So you may be thinking, why do I need to get on my knees <laughs> first off? And why does it need to be in secret? So I have a biblical piece of advice for you guys. If you guys want to look this up, it is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, and I'm going to read it from scripture for you. It says, but when you go and pray, go into your room, shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So we've talked a lot about praying and that's kind of a common theme in a lot of these thoughts that the Lord has really brought to my attention. And why in secret? Because God desires us to seek him out without wanting us to wave a flag and say, look at me, congratulations, I'm a Christian, I'm doing all the right things, right? There's something so, 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 so special about when you have this time and you really are in secret. Nobody knows what you're doing. Nobody knows what you're saying, but God does and God can hear you. And it even tells us in Matthew 6, 6 at the very end there, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So God even tells us he's going to reward us. He's going to bless us for this moment, for this sweet reunion and this sweet meeting that we have with him in private. So I'm going to give you an example of something that I do. And I'll give you an example that um, Ashley Hetherington, I believe is her last name, does. So I saw her doing this and she really did inspire me for a lot of the points today. So I would hope that you guys would go and check out her channel because she's so sound in biblical advice. Like everything she says is right on and I love it so much. But she actually has like a closet where you go in the closet and there's like all these prayer cards and like battle cards that she has with scripture. And it's her private space. Like nobody else is in there. It's a small room. And I thought like, how sweet is that? And I didn't really understand what this verse meant until I started doing this myself. And it just deepened my relationship with Christ. And I feel like it's, it's like hard sometimes for us to see like, oh, well, you know, I feel like my relationship isn't growing in Christ, but it's just like any other relationship, you guys. If you're dating someone, you want to continually do like things to, you know, impress them and, and make them happy and make them smile. And like you, you try new things together, right? And, and you go fun places and you do things that are just for you too, not anybody else, but then you have group dates and stuff, right? Well, praying in secret is just another thing that you can do to deepen your relationship with the Lord. So for me, what I do is before I shower, I will pray. So I actually get on my hands and knees and I don't ever say anything out loud because I don't want, I like, I don't even want, like the Bible tells us it's about, it's not just flesh and blood, it's about spirits and principalities. So I don't even want anything to hear me, like human or like other stuff. I'm, I am saying like demonic stuff is out there and I just want God to hear it. And God is the only one that knows my thoughts. So I will get on my hands and knees and I will pray and this act, like just, it breaks you down too. Like I, I, there's been times where I'll pray and I just like start crying and I'm so emotional and I don't know why, but it's like God is taking things out of my heart and like revealing all these things to me. And it's so sweet. It's such a precious time. So praying in secrets is something I would highly encourage you to do and incorporate into a new habit or routine. And hopefully if you can on a daily basis. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is probably the most relatable and it is to block out your calendar for fellowship with other people in Christ. So fellowship with other Christians, fellowship with other like-minded people who love Jesus, who are reading the Bible every day, who are strong in their prayer life, who are wiser than you, and who are on a journey to continue to love Jesus just like you. And the biblical piece of advice and what I'll reference to is Thessalonians 5.11. And if you have your Bible, you can read it with me. It says, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. This is essential to grow in Christ. That was my little note there. And the reason I believe and what scripture tells us is we wanna build each other up. So there may be something that you've experienced that you have 
really learn from the Lord in and you know, you've, you've been through it. You've been through it. And then your friend in Christ who loves Jesus, who has also gone through different things in life, they're gonna speak truth into your life. And they are going to be able to add to your walk and to your experience with loving Jesus more and learning and growing. And fellowship is really important because the enemy will do everything he can to tell us we don't have enough time to go to church. We don't have enough time to meet other young Christian people. We don't have enough time in the day to get in the word. We don't have enough. It's all, it's all this misconstruction of how much time do we have and blocking out your calendar is going to be really important because it's going to allow you to dedicate time to the Lord, dedicate time to the Lord. God tells us that he wants the first fruit of our good harvest, but also the first fruit could be even from your time. Are you dedicating too much time to working and not dedicating any time to knowing other Christian people? Because there's been so many times where, and, and this has happened to me recently, where I have a good friend, her name is Lindsay. I'm going through something and I feel like I don't know what to do and I feel very alone and the enemy has made me feel very isolated. I feel like I don't know why this is happening. I'm struggling. And she spoke really sweet truths and the Lord used her as a vessel in my life to get me through that season of difficulty and to, to speak truth into my life because of her faith and her fellowship with the Lord. And that's so, so, so sweet. And I would highly encourage you, block out your Wednesday night to go to midweek, block out your Sunday to go to church, block out your, whatever your young adults program time is, go. And obviously I'm not telling you to drop work for this, but there's blackout dates on like Disneyland calendars, right? You need to blackout dates in your week so that you can have time with Jesus and other Christians. And um, if you want to know that verse again, it was Thessalonians. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. So we need to continue to not only build ourselves, but one another. And you may have the ability to pray for people. You may have the ability to speak prophetic words into people's lives. Like these are gifts that we don't want to neglect. And we can get built up and learn more about these gifts in fellowship with Christ. So that is very, very, very important. And I would highly encourage you to block out your calendar to dedicate time for growing not only in your own walk with the Lord but in your walk with others because we're called to unity and to be light and that is what God wants for us and from us okay you guys holy crapola that was I feel like that was a long video I don't know why I've been sitting here forever I actually got up to go to the bathroom like in between these takes and my foot was so asleep that I almost fell on the ground I couldn't feel up to like mid shin so i'm gonna be getting up and wrapping up this video and that was what god put on my heart to share with all of you and if you guys need any prayer requests the comments are always open and don't forget to subscribe because i'm super excited to see the lord bless this and i pray that he blesses this because my intention is to share the gospel truth that jesus he died on the cross for sinners like me and sinners like you and we're sinners and better sinners and everyone like god did not exclude you know the blood on the cross to only redeem some it redeems everyone all the hurt all the pain all the things that you've gone through that maybe nobody even knows about he wants to make that right he wants to soften your heart he wants to have a personal relationship with you because he loves you so 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 much he knows what you're going through he knows what you're suffering with and he wants to comfort you through all of it. And I would hope that this channel would give you the tools and resources to learn how to have a, a Christian walk and a relationship with Jesus. And really, if you have not accepted Jesus yet, the only thing you have to do is admit your sins to the Lord. That's between you and the Lord, nobody else. Jesus needs to know that, not the five people around you that you're with. Um, and then you need to ask for forgiveness. Say, Lord, I am sorry that I've sinned against you, that I have rebelled against you, but I believe that you did die on the cross for me and I am turning away. I'm turning away from the sinful life that I've lived and all the things that have separated me from you 
and I'm asking for forgiveness and I believe that you died on the cross for me and I accept you into my heart and I love you Jesus I, I want your salvation I want your redemption I want a relationship with you and guys that's as simple as it that's all you have to do that's all you have to pray that's between you and Jesus and no one else and I would hope that you guys would find hope through this channel and the ability to grow your relationship with Jesus in so many different ways. And I love you all so, so, so much. And I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you daily. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.